Yeah, these look really, really good. All right. Awesome possum. No, this isn't a scene from Hannibal. I'm going to clone some oyster mushrooms from an oyster mushroom growing set that I kind of forgot I had. I got this at Target about two weeks ago. And I uh, opened up my pantry door and there it was sitting there. Luckily it was in the dark, it was in a cool area, so it should be okay. But I was like, oh, I should probably do something with that. And one of the reasons why I waited to cut this open and start letting these grow out was because I wanted to kind of clone some of the mycelium from this mushroom growing kit onto some agar so I could save it for growing on, you know, other substrates. That way I can kind of propagate uh, my own mushroom bags. I don't have to keep buying these kits, which are really, really nice and really convenient. But at 20 bucks a piece, they are kind of you know expensive. So it would be nice to be able to uh, kind of do my own. And I don't have, to, like, it's kind of nice to start with this too, not have to grow your mushrooms off of spores because it's just, it'll be so much faster. And holy crap, look. Look at that. There's a huge chunk of mycelium right here. And you know what? That's where we're going to take our samples from for cloning. So I'm actually just going to put that there. Let me move this over here. Let me get my scalpel out. Now these are the same exact Petri dishes I made in my last video. And as you can see, they all look pretty good. It's been roughly two weeks actually since I made these dishes and there was one or there was two in that batch that actually did form a, a contamination but the nice thing about these uh compartmented petri dishes is if you just have a contamination in one compartment and the other ones the other two are clean you can usually salvage that petri dish and at least use two of the compartments but i'm going to get some sterile scalpel blades i'm just going to get like three blades uh, i don't i don't really want to deal with flame sterilization right now this is going to be a pretty straightforward procedure right here let me zoom in a little bit actually i'm going to cut a little slit into the plastic here that way i can get at this nice chunk of mycelium that's that was probably in all reality trying to turn into mushroom pins let me switch to voiceover for this part because what i said on camera was very poorly explained basically any kind of dense growth you observe like this is a portion of the mushroom colony into which a significant amount of resources has been pulled you can see this large clump of mycelium was growing towards the filter on the bag that allows oxygen in for the mushroom colony to breathe this suggests it was attempting to make its way to a fresh air source in an attempt to initiate fruiting. When a colony first starts putting off fruit bodies, these tiny initial structures are referred to as pins. These pins, if given enough time and favorable conditions, will then develop into the mushroom fruits, which is the part of the mushroom colony we eat, use medicinally, recreationally, whatever. Mushroom pins and the dense areas of mycelium from which these pins originate are very fast growing in comparison to the rest of the mushroom colony. They're also usually slightly higher resistant to contamination, hence the reason we're taking samples from this part of the mushroom bag and not just a part of the colonized substrate. Anyway, back to past me. I just sprayed this part down with a little bit of alcohol. Let me put a blade on my scalpel. As far as I know, I think these blades are, yeah, are sterilized via gamma radiation. So, they're pr as long as the package isn't damaged, these will stay sterile in the envelopes that they come in pretty much indefinitely. As long as the integrity of the package isn't compromised. This is going to be the most simple part. Cut this open here. Actually, I'm just going to cut a whole little piece of this out because I, I can always just fold this part down whenever I go to fruit these mushrooms so it's not a big deal there Oops. take that out of the way good 
All right. And now it's simply just a matter of cutting little chunks of the mycelium out and quickly placing them on the agar like that. Since I have three blades here, I think I'll do three uh, petri dishes. I'll do one blade per petri dish. Now I did swab down my entire counter here with uh, some bleach pre previous, like, like before I started this, I had it all sanitized pretty good. I had my air purifier, two of them actually with HEPA filters running for about an hour out here before I started this. And I also UV sanitized the surface with these little UV wands that I have. But on, to be completely honest, I don't really know how effective they are. I got them at Walmart on sale for 50 cents. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how, how much good that did me, but we'll see. And this is exactly what you would do if you're uh, like trying to clone uh, an oyster mushroom. Just get a chunk of the mycelium or a chunk of the middle of the mushroom and cut it out. Place it on your agar like that. Eh, what the heck, I'll just do four. I'll do four dishes. All there is to that. Now I'm actually going to fold that down there, fold the bag like this. I'm just going to use my same scalpel. I'm going to put my petri dish off to the side here so I don't knock it over. And as you can see in these mushroom grow kits, they have these little cardboard punch out parts right here. So let's knock this out. Ah. It's just to cut it. Perfect. It's, I am not going to cut it. I'm going to rip it. Oh. I probably should have cut it. Oh, I should have cut it. That's fine. And, uh, oh yeah. Like a pro. Mm. Okay. Now, since I have that folded back over, I'm going to bump the camera, which is entirely crucial to this step of the procedure. I'll put this back in here. Let me close this all back up like that. Like that. And I'm going to make a cut right here, right here right here and right here there now there's four different spots for the mycelium in the mushroom bag to be exposed to fresh air and a little bit of water evaporation uh, and that is generally what causes mushroom colonies such as these ones to initiate fruiting. Now, one thing that you have to remember about these, let me take my mask off, I don't need it on anymore. It is going to take a little while for these to start pinning. Like, don't get discouraged if you don't see anything happening within a couple of days, because sometimes this does take a while. I have a feeling this is gonna start putting off mushrooms pretty quickly. Uh, and then, stupid fly, hold on. Missed him, where's he at? Oh, well. Once you do start seeing your mushroom fruiting, your little pins put off, just 
spray them down about twice a day. Not you don't have to drench them, just you know, give them a little spritz with water a couple times a day, and then just baby them until they get to the size that you want them. Harvest them, cook them up, and enjoy. These mushroom petri dishes that we just inoculated here all have a decent amount of the mycelium from that grow kit in them. I'm going to wrap these in parafilm. The parafilm is a really nice semi-permeable membrane that will allow the exchange of fresh air, you know, fresh oxygen, and it'll let uh, excess carbon dioxide out and let fresh oxygen in, but it will keep most of the moisture within the petri dishes themselves. It'll it, Even uh, petri dishes wrapped with parafilm will dry out eventually, but it prolongs the the moisture content of your petri dishes for so much longer than just having them, you know, unwrapped like this. So I'm going to wrap these real quick in parafilm. And after that, it's just time to put them in an incubator. I'll put them in the incubator about 25 degrees Celsius thereabouts. So let me get the parafilm and that'll be that. Parafilm is relatively expensive compared to, like, press and seal or, you know, like, cling wrap or something, but a little goes a long way. I got this 250-foot spool, I guess you can call it, uh, like, oh gosh, years ago, and it's it's still lasting me quite, quite, like, a long time. Like, I haven't really made much of a dent in this. Now, granted, I haven't really done mycology, at least not like this, for about a year or so. I haven't really had to dip into it too much. But I, I do, if you're if you're wanting to do some amateur mycology, I do recommend picking up some parafilm on Amazon. And if possible, get the, the wide kind that I have here. The 2-inch wide parafilm is really, really nice to work with. I have some 1-inch parafilm, and it's... I mean, it works, but it's just such a pain in the butt to, to stretch over these Petri dishes. I like the two-inch ones because you, the two-inch parafilm, because you can really get a nice good stretch on it, yet it's still covering up a lot of the top and bottom parts, so it's really sturdy and it really stays on there. Whereas the one-inch, yeah, you can cover up the, you know, the, the part of the Petri dishes where they meet, but... It's not going to hang over too much right there, so it, it has a tendency to kind of cut through itself and fall off. Which, if you actually want your moisture to stay in your Petri dishes, is not a good thing. Now, it's also uh, very important to be frustratingly difficult to remove the parafilm from the wax paper backing. Uh, because the parafilm has the same kind of wax that the wax paper has in it. The parafilm is actually made from paraffin or at least a form of paraffin, hence the name parafilm. So it doesn't really uh, de-stick from the non-stick backing that they put on here very easily. At least not with the stuff I have. And that is that. For now, I'm just going to write oyster and today's date, which I believe is the 12th. Yes. I'm going to write that on the bottoms of my Petri dishes. So that's it. I'll edit this down into a, a shorter video than the 24 minutes that it's currently sitting at. Well, let's see. It's been five days. And we already have a really decent amount of growth. I had to turn these upside down and show you from the underside because, as you can see, the lids of them are very heavily condensated, which is fine. Upside right here, this is almost completely colonized. That's great. Yeah, all these are doing really well, except for this one. Uh, this one isn't contaminated or anything. Uh, it's just not growing very quickly because I had this just sitting out on my workbench trying to get a time lapse of it. And it just never really grew that well. These three were in my incubator. My actual, like, 
laboratory incubator, not my homemade one. And you can see that they're just taking off really, really nicely. I guess I can kind of, let me just get rid of some of the condensation. It's probably not the best thing to do. I don't think that'll hurt anything. Looks really, really good. What I'm seeing, I'm very happy with that. <clears throat> this is exactly what you want to see. You just want to see your your clones. I guess I can shake that one there. Not the best thing to do, but I guess I'll do it for you guys so that you can actually see. Let me turn the flash off so that it's not reflecting. But yeah, look at that. Five days of growth. And that's what it looks like. It's probably not the best thing to shake them and have the condensation go down on your agar. Because that could take little contaminations down and have them propagate on the agar. But uh, you know what? I'll, I'll do it for you guys just so you can see what the, the growth looks like here. Yeah, these look really, really good. And since we're doing an update, I may as well show you how nice the mushrooms in my mushroom kit are growing uh, like I said this is five days of like after I made that first video and the mushrooms are starting to pin really nicely and they're going to put off at least four nice big bunches here it looks like so that is fantastic I actually have this uh, doing a little time lapse on my old phone here so Hopefully this video turns out pretty cool. I tried t doing a time lapse for one of these uh, petri dishes. It just it didn't work, so I kind of switched over to the mushroom grow kit since that is actually working. Okay, now I promise the video is over.